Welcome to the Live Aid Liverpool 2023 podcast with me, Tony Cook, the director and creator of the event, which takes place at the Adelphi Hotel on Sunday, the 16th of April, or in aid of Shelter Merseyside and Alder Hay Children's Charity. Over the coming days and weeks, I'll be talking to some of the people involved in the event, including the two charities, the sponsors and some of the artists involved as well. And today I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Cavern Club director and also a very, very wonderful friend of mine, Julia Baird. Julia, Hi. welcome. Hi, Tony, and thank you for inviting me to what I thought was a derelict building. There you go. There you <laughs> it's go. very not. <laughs> State of the art in here. Yeah, well, first, I just want to say a massive thanks to the Cavern Club um, for continuing to sponsor Live Aid Liverpool. Um, it's a massive stamp of approval for what not just myself, but the whole team and mm. all the artists are trying to do by, you know, raising awareness and raising money for Well, it fulfills our music sphere and of course the charity giving as well which we yeah. um we do as a business we always have done yeah. yeah now how did your connections with the cavern club begin oh my goodness i've always been um sort of i've known dave and bill and even george but not so much because he was sort of a director but away apart yeah, yeah. and then he came back mm. so but dave and bill i've known since ooh, the 90s, in the 90s. In fact, way back, vaguely then, in the 80s. And what has actually happened was, basically, there'd been a programme about John on Panorama, BBC Panorama, commemorating five years since he had died. And uh, um, it is so wrong, the story was so wrong, that I rang the BBC. And you know in the days when you could actually pick up the phone <laughs> and dial like Talk this, to someone. not tap, dial yeah. and within 10 minutes I was speaking to the producer of the programme and in a nutshell he told me that John was an only child and I said well no you're speaking to John's sister and he said no I'm not because he never had any sisters so I wrote a story and I went to find Bill and Dave because I'd heard about them in Liverpool and I was living over in Chester at the time I found them and they said why don't you come to our Beetle? Um, it wasn't Beetle Week in those days. It was mm. Beetle Half Hour, wasn't yeah, it? Like, yeah, you know, right, yeah. and the the, um, the convention, the Beatles yeah, yeah. convention. And I went, and from that, I met someone and wrote the first book, John Lennon, My Brother. I didn't know an awful lot. Now this is leading up to the cavern. Of course, I'm becoming more and more involved in the cavern at that point, uh, doing things that. Because I had small children, you know, you, mm. you've got a, another life, haven't you? I was working, yeah, I was course. teaching, I had children. And and um, so I, I then, when the next book came out, I got back to my, I'd done my job, if you like, got back to work, got back to everything, and did occasional things with the cavern, mm. becoming good friends with, particularly, Dave and Bill. And... Then in 2004, we went to Australia. Now, you didn't come, did you? I wasn't on that particular but trip. But it was the Mersey Beatles. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we went because it was 40 years of the Beatles having landed in Adelaide. Adelaide, yes. So we went to Adelaide, care of the, I suppose, their council, their mayor. We were in the town. We were feted gloriously while we were there. And um, so we, we went and... Bill and I were chatting one night and he said that they would like to find somebody to come in with them, to invest with them. Mm. And I had just sold a house. And I said, I could do that. Mm. And he said, well, go and sleep on it. We'd had a drink. <laughs> so I did. And the next morning I opened the door and Bill's almost standing there outside the door. Yeah. And he said, have you thought about it? And I said, yes. And the answer is yes. So I came in from that point and that meant George, Bill, me and Dave. Mm. And I was the smaller part of it, of course. But then that's how I got more involved with the cavern. Then I took early retirement from my job uh, in 2004 because joining the cavern enabled me to do that, meaning I wasn't going to school every day or I was running a unit and I wasn't doing that every day because mm. it was very uh, time and energy consuming. Mm. And 
I wrote the book that you have in front of you now called Imagine This Growing Up with My Brother John Lennon. And the reason why there was another book, there is not going to be another book. You know, it's not, I'm not retiring every year or writing my memoir every yeah, year. Yeah. My middle, uh, my mother's middle sister, Nanny, was the one who knew absolutely everything. And she didn't die till 1997. Okay. And she started to talk to me. All the things that I had been asking her for years. Mm. I think as she got more frail, she never lost her marbles ever. Uh, she started to talk to me. And I said, Nanny, are you aware that you're, you're actually telling me these things now? And she said, of course I am. You're the only one who's ever asked, who's badgered me all these years. And I had every time I was there, I'd say, will you tell me about this? Will you tell me about this? Mm. And the answer was always, no, dear, no. Mm. Well, she talked to me. And that change didn't alter the story, the basics of the story. Yeah. But there was so much I didn't know. Mm. And that John sadly died not knowing. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, me and you have known each other for... Well, quite a few years um, now. Years I mean, years. as you just touched on the fact that in 2004, the band, I'd, I'd actually just joined the band at that particular yeah. time. But the flights had already been booked and yeah. the thing yeah. was already, you know, yeah. um, in place for that one. Well, they were re representing the city. Yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. Um, but I've known you in the last few years because you've been coming to America, um, not just America, to Sweden and other places, yeah. you know. Yeah, and, with um, the Mersey Beatles. With the Mersey Beatles. But um, what, have you got a fun, like a really good memory or a funny story that sticks out? Oh, you know, from our, our time? time? Yeah. <coughs> well, I can tell you now that often... Tony and I struck up a great uh, friendship because we're both interested in just about anything. You put a subject down there and one of us will know something about it. And by the next day, we'll know a lot more because That's we've right. gone and had a, a right look at it so that we can say, yeah. oh, I've just had a look at that. So often when the others were in bed, we either beard out or coffeed out, we will be sitting, talking about yeah. putting the world to rights. Putting the world to rights. Putting the right. world to rights. Yeah, yeah. And often in the early morning, it was just you and me, wasn't it? Mm. We'd get up and we'd have an early coffee yeah. and we'd start straight away. And of course, the American elections were coming on and we were writing and the candidates. And I thought we should have had a vote. We were there that, that That's much. That's right. Yeah, we, we are. should have had a vote. <laughs> there three months of the year or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So we did have a brilliant time and we travelled and... I mean, I'm not doing that anymore, sadly, although I might join you again. Um, we saw so much of America and the real Americans, mm. you know, the ones that probably never leave the country, the, the warmest, most generous, most loving, mm. accepting people. Mm. We had a welcome everywhere, didn't yeah. we? Especially in the Midwest. The Midwest is oh, a I special love that. place, isn't it? I love it. Yeah. Indiana, yeah. Uh, Ohio, all the what I just call ordinary towns in ordinary places. And when you were setting up and doing your sound checks, mm. I couldn't get out fast enough. Mm. You never saw me then. Mm. I wouldn't be having my eye on the time. I'd go and find bookshops and just get a feel yeah. of the town and just really, really enjoyed that bit. Mm. Well, but obviously, we were in Memphis as well. We, we recorded an album uh, as well. And you were, in, you were there with us in Sun Studios, you know. Memphis, uh, oh, Memphis, yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, Elvis, Elvis. Yeah, yeah. And uh, to, be, to be part of um, the Memphis scene, if you like, because we got to know so many people there, mm. didn't we? we? We went to the funeral of B.B. King yeah. because we happened to be there. Mm. I wrote on the wall, did you, at B.B. Yeah, King's right, Club? Yeah. Yeah, wrote yeah. on the wall, and we've spent so many hours in there seeing fabulous music, mm. and the Soul Museum, and the Rock Museum, and the Blues Museum, yeah. and, of course, Sun Studio. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. one of the highlights is the time that we've been allowed oh, in Sun was, Studio when you were recording. Yeah, for me, it was a dream come true. Yeah. I mean, everyone like dreams of like recording at Abbey Road, for example, or... Sun Studios was was for me to be in the pre to be in a room which has had so much presence of yeah. legends. Yeah. It was just so inspiring, yeah. and for me, I was playing the piano that was played by the great like Jerry Lee, and, Jerry Lee Lewis, and yeah. the the piano had the cigarette stains. It had, um, it was just battered, yeah. and my arms felt like Popeye by the time I'd finished mm -hmm. playing because 
it was it was so hard. It, yes, it was so hard to play. But yeah. as I said, Memphis is for me my favorite um, place in the US to, to visit. Well, you know. where Elvis stood when they did "It's All Right, Mama," mm. it's elastoplast like that, like mm. across. It's a strip there that you'll put on somebody's saw, right. and a strip there, and you've got to go and stand on there to have your photo taken. I wanted to kiss it, but I didn't. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Elvis stood. On that spot, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Of course, I've been to see the house, That's right. and uh, been to Elvis Presley Enterprises, which is right next door to Graceland, yeah. and it's got the biggest round table. King Arthur knew nothing; he hasn't seen a table He's like not this. Seen that, it's no, the biggest no. round table I have ever ever seen. Yeah. Um, and then uh, my partner and I, Roger and I, we go down to Mississippi for the music. Spent a couple of weeks there in Clarksdale and yeah, Cleveland, right, yeah. all the old Greenwood, all the old blues clubs. We just haunt them, mm. absolutely mm. haunt them. Yeah, you always used to stay on after we, after we we came home. You, <laughs> yeah. you know, you look at you. You were staying on, weren't you? Yeah, you know, you're going was. to the Mississippi to the Delta area, wasn't exactly. It? Yeah. And we'd meet in Memphis. Roger, yeah. um, uh, I said to Mark, the um, organizer of mm. your tours. And I'd say, Mark, can you just push my return flight back? Um, because we're going to buy flights for Roger. And we met in Memphis. Mm -hmm. And really, I kept saying, we ought to be going to see other parts of America, maybe meet in Philadelphia and go north here, up to Chicago, which mm -hmm. Chicago we've got to go to for the mm -hmm. blues. Mm -hmm. But um, always we just ended up down in Mississippi and we've met so many people there and mm -hmm. done so much with them. Yeah. Now, Elvis, yeah. I think has had a massive part in your love of music. Um, we just touched on the fact that we've been to Grace. And how much does Elvis's music mean to you? Oh, it means the world to me because it just evokes my mother immediately. Mm. And I'm sure it was the same for John. Um, when we were growing up, we had an old, um, well, it wasn't old then, the old HMV record player. Yeah, yeah. You know, with the, the, the great big needle that you sort of lifted over and then it yeah. go, rrr, yeah. rrr, you, just, you were trying not to scratch the record. Yeah, yeah. And um, my father came in one day and said, is this it, is this, is this it, the record that you want? And it was either Heartbreak Hotel or, which, Heartbreak Hotel, which was the first one? Oh, was it? Was that all right, Mama? No, was, no. Was Either Hound Dog or Heartbreak. I think okay. it was Heartbreak Hotel. And my mother said, yes, yes, yes. Mm. And I remember John, my cousins, um, my mother, my father, all jiving in the front room, mm. which wasn't that big, mm. to these records. Yeah, um, yeah. Lonnie Donegan, Gene yeah. Vincent, Eddie Cochran, mm. and then Buddy Holly later. But the main... Source. My dad was a Mario Lanza fan, so this was quite rocky. Yeah, it's a, yeah it's a bit left field from that. Yeah. yeah. So, hearing Elvis's voice, I am right back in that room. Yeah. yeah I yeah. love it. I just, um, apart from the fact that he's the best looking man that has ever walked on this planet. Mm. Do you agree? I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> not going to disagree. Yeah. Um, we're going back, going back to the Live Aid Liverpool event, which is obviously taking place in just seven weeks' mm -hmm. time. Now, it's still hard to believe that now. Um, we've got lots of acts on and stuff. But what to the two charities, um, of which are Alder Hay and mm -hmm. for Shelter Merseyside, I'll touch on Alder Hay first. Everyone talks about the magic of Alder Hay. Um, do you have any um, your views about Alder Hay and how <sighs> important it is? Well... I mean, we've always been brilliant for hospitals in Liverpool, haven't we? The first mm. women's hospital, the first children's hospital. Um, and Old Hay, I think, was the first at the... And it, we had the children's hospital at the top of Oxford... Oxford Street, wasn't Road. it? Road, Oxford M Street. Myrtle Street, wasn't it? Yes, Myrtle Street. Street. Yeah. And when we were coming into town on the bus, we used to see the balcony mm. there, and there'd be a rocking horse. Yeah, yeah. Health and safety wouldn't allow that now. No, they? no. And no. there were children out there playing, sitting, and and uh, you've got the women's hospital next door to mm. it. We've got all these things. And Alder Hay was um, the first specialist that I think children still come in from all over the country, don't they? Yeah. It's, to Alder Hay. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, it is spectacularly... It's a research hospital, yeah. a huge research hospital. Yeah. And, of course, new now, which is just brilliant. Mm. Of course, because it's new, they're always looking for funding. Mm. You know, the government can't do these things and the generosity of people 
builds these places. They've got the McDonald's yeah. house for the parents to stay in and everything. Yeah. And the cavern actually did for two years, if not three. Let's go for two to be to be sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, did we have two charities? going every year, and Alderhey was one for that amount of time. Mm. And we have also, uh, over. I live over in Cheshire now, and we have Burns Night every year, and every year we do a big charity run, and all the money goes straight to the charity, and it's mm. for all sorts of things. We always have air ambulance, because we live in the middle of nowhere. Ambulance wouldn't even find you, never no, mind no. get you to anywhere. Mm. Um, so air ambulance is always 50% and the other 50% we choose. And a couple of years ago, I said, could we have Alder Hay, please? And mm. they said, yes. Mm. And we got just over £3,000 and we yeah. took it to them. And that was, we specified that we wanted the children. We said it was fun money. Mm. We wanted the children um, to receive it directly. To receive it directly. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Now with Shelter, with it being the other charity as well, um, it was only when I interviewed uh, the representative from Shelter the other day, you know, the, st the statistics, put my teeth in for that one. The stats um, for the homeless in this region is just, it's astronomical and it's mind-blowing. There's like over 14,500 people on the streets in the northwest alone, yeah. but over 6,000 of those are children. Yes. I just, it's when you say children... I mean, I know the children, but are we talking under 18, under 16? I think 16? so. I think that's what yeah, they meant. Because yeah. you know, they I mean, are children. That's right, yeah. But children brings to mind an eight-year-old, doesn't yeah, it? So yeah, they're yeah. from 16 down. Yeah. Far too young not yeah. to be at home in any home, whether it's mum, auntie, nan, even a care home. Anything is better, mm. surely, in most cases. Yeah, yeah. In most cases. That's right. Uh, no, with the, the same ethos in mind, really, you're also not just an ambassador for the city of Liverpool or the Cavern, but you're also an ambassador for a wonderful place in Liverpool called Strawberry Field. Yeah. I've been there a few times and it's just, the whole place is just magical for me. Um, it is, isn't it? Tell us all about Strawberry Field. Well, and the honorary president. So um, I, I'm in on some of the um, organisation meetings as one every quarter for that but mainly I'm involved with the students and it is for students young people of mild to moderate learning disabilities mm. it includes various forms of ASD on the autistic spectrum um, sometimes when, when they're inhibited from communications and you know the um, it, life is difficult for yeah. them although they want to join in. Mm. It, it's a barrier you've got to break down. It's how to do this. And yeah. it's individual with every student that you meet. Mm. Uh, we have Down syndrome. We have, um, we've had, have cerebral palsy. But these things are not, not things that will prevent them joining in life. It is the lack of attention from society yeah. that does that. Yeah. So if you can... Bring them in to a program. So there's eight. Mm -hmm. We have had ten, but we, we sort of settled on eight mm -hmm. as a, a number where all the coaches, fantastic coaches, can give enough individual attention to them, mm -hmm. to the students all the time. Yeah. And they end up doing CVs. Um, I wish I could show you. I've got a little video if you wanted at some point, it's on my phone, to show one of the students. I'd have to ask her first. She, she said on the video, I couldn't speak when I came here. That's right, yeah. yeah. Couldn't mm. speak to anybody. One young lad spent time in the loo. He obviously wasn't on the loo. He was hiding in there. Mm. Now he's running the place. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another fellow, I said, what do you want to do with your life? He said, I want to be a chef. I said, do you like cooking? He said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does some chefing now for Liverpool Football Club. There you go. I mean, he, he had ideas. It's yeah. just that who's going to, in the school system that we yeah. have now, yeah. in the lack of money mm -hmm. that is allocated, not lack of money that we have, but the lack of money that is allocated, allocated yeah. Yeah. they slip through the system mm much too easily mm. and we could spread it a lot wider now strawberry field we now have about a hundred and i'd say i'm guessing this 115 students who've gone through honor and are in some form of paid work mm. 
Mm. Now, we're not asking for nine to five, neck curtains, 2.4 no. children, not looking at that. No. Well, none of us are, are we? But, no. you know, that was expected a few years ago. And mm. if you couldn't do that at the end of your school life, then you didn't get the concentration on you. Mm. Sometimes they'll work half a day, mm. one day, mm. then maybe three days. Yeah, yeah, um, that's right. But they're getting paid. Mm. They're earning. Yeah, their yeah. Own money. It's a brilliant pathway, isn't it, for them? You it's know, wonderful. And they live with their families mostly, um, you know, who are absolutely devoted to them. But they didn't know where to go. Mm. The, there are very few places to go. Yeah. I would love to see this program set up all over the country: mm. Leeds, Manchester, Edinburgh, Glasgow, London. Needs about fifty, doesn't it? You mm. know. And now that the program is there. Now that we've got the template for the program, mm. uh, which is being amended all the time, it's dynamic. If something's not working, it gets amended uh, ongoing. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, the program could be run out of a garden shed, mm. an old classroom, mm. a scout hut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We are the fortunate ones because we've got this state-of-the-art building. Mm. I call it Battleship Galactica. 2025. Yeah. yeah. It is, well, you know, yeah, it yeah. is it's utterly wonderful. stupendous. It's wonderful. And what, something else which is, um, if people haven't been there yet, I definitely encourage people to go there. Yeah. But on display in the visitor centre there is the piano that John wrote. The very Imagine, one. The very yeah. one. It's on display at Strawberry With the Fields. cigarette burns you were talking about? Yes, exactly. So, um, but yeah, it, it's just a magical... And if I had hairs on the back of my neck, they'd stand up every time I go there, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, um, but definitely advise people to go there. Now, Beetle Week is, again, something else, which yeah. is obviously the cavern, yeah. um, sort of does every year um, at the Adelphi. Wonderful hotel, mm -hmm. great place. Um now, will you be going to there this year? Certainly will. Yeah. I haven't got a single plan yet. No, <laughs> there's no plans <laughs> at Beetle Week, Julia. No plan, but I always no. go. Always yeah, go. yeah, the only yeah. plan is that we sit on the steps of the Adelphi outside every single morning yes. before the sunrise. Yes. You know, that's, what, that's the main plan. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, as, as I say, um, your musical loves, we've touched on that, uh, Beetle Week. Will you be coming to Live Aid Liverpool? Yes, 16th okay. of April. It's 16th in Madara. of April, brilliant. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've got lots of acts and... Um, you know, covering lots of genres of music. Yeah. We've got your swing and soul to rock and roll. Yeah. Some of the acts that are residents in the cavern are going to be there, the Shakers, right. yeah. the young band Beatles Complete. Have you seen them yet? No, I haven't. Well, um, are they good? Incredible. Yeah, great. Um, we've got them. we got my sister, Kathy. She's going to be performing. Really? Because um, yeah. I think, that, I mean, my sister, I think she's the only female resident artist at the cavern at the moment. Right. Could be wrong, but I think that's right, right. that's all kudos to her. It is indeed. But, um, yeah. but yeah, as I say, we got tributes to the Beatles, tributes to the Doors, the Queen. Um, well, you've got to have Queen. You've got to have, got to have Queen. Freddie Mercury, yeah, yeah, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. I mean, he was the star of the show, and yeah. they nearly didn't go. No, I mean, it's that's just right. amazing. Yeah. But I remember back in 1985. I remember the pictures that 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 had come from Biafra. I mm. mean, you know. Absolutely, it was in 1985. 85 was the Live Aid event, yeah. yeah. It was the event, but the pictures have been coming through, obviously, yeah. before. And Bob Geldof picked it up and ran with it. I mean, that is his legacy, isn't yeah. it, that he did Live Aid. All, yeah. all the best to him for that. Mm. And I'd taken my children to France in the car, and we had to go and find, I think it was a football stadium, where they have big screens set up so that we could watch it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I still can't it believe it's astounding. nearly 40 years ago. I know. In two years' time, we're going to be celebrating, or not, not celebrating, marking the 40th anniversary of the original Live Aid. And just last week, Bob Geldof actually done an interview on radio um, talking about the original single and um, how it was written to change lives. Mm. And obviously when we'd done our Band-Aid single two years ago, three years ago now, yeah. um, he did receive our... You know our version of it because we changed the lyrics. You know, yeah. with the help of Brian as well. By the way, yeah. Brian, he's just he's still still getting over jet lag from being in America, hasn't he? So, yeah. Um, but yeah, we received a holy grail email from Warner Brothers and from um, and from Bob 
Bob Geldof gave, gave us the blessing to do the single. Well, you know, that's which fantastic. Is, you know, <coughs> I mean, coming from Bob Geldof, cool, that's really... Him. I still yeah. call it the Holy Grail email. I've never done a river dance mm. in bed before when I've ever ever read, apart from in America. You know, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to you coming to the event, mm. Julia. And once again, I want to thank the Calvin Club for sponsoring the event. It's a, it means a lot. So. Well, it's a, it's a privilege for us to be able to do it and to be involved in it. Yeah. Mm. Well, tickets are still on sale for Live Aid Liverpool, which takes place on Sunday, the 16th of April at the Adelphi Hotel. Go onto the Eventbrite website and just search for Live Aid Liverpool and we hope to see you there. Take care.